Welcome back as we delve into a vitally important medical discussion right now. And although December is a time, yes, for fun for most people, it is a very difficult period for those patients who need blood and blood products to lead regular lives. Now, blood stocks fluctuate throughout the year, but can be particularly low during the festive season. We know this for a number of reasons. And you had to tell us more about how we can donate blood and the importance of it. Our transfusion medical specialist, Dr. Caroline Hilton, and head of marketing and PI at the Western Cape Blood Service, good friends of ours, Michelle Vermeulen. And if you have any questions about donating blood or any cool stories that you want to share with us, send us a WhatsApp voice note with those questions and comments to 063-408-8863. Guys, welcome to it. So good to connect with you, albeit always under trying times because it's always trying times when it comes to our blood reserves. So, Michelle, I understand you know the number, um, and I always like to start with this, just to inject a little bit of urgency into this conversation, because it always feels like there is doom a day away, two days away, three days away. Where do we sit in terms of those blood reserves of what's needed right now? So we always aim to have a five-day blood stock in all our blood groups, and currently in our O positive, O negative, a positive as well as B positive, we only have two days worth of blood supply left. So yes, it is critically low and we need blood donors to, whether you're a new blood donor or a, or a regular blood donor, we need you to come and donate blood. And it's, it's so simple and easy. And uh, yes, you get to join this community, which feels wonderful that you're doing something in the service of others that's costing you absolutely nothing or, or about a litre worth, but it's, it's very, very little. But I understand there are some dynamics at play. So maybe, Caroline, you can start because we listed, it felt like you were listening. Every blood type <laughs> feels like it's at a, at a low point at the moment. What role does this blood play? So obviously we know when there's accidents, blood transfusion, that being one area, but why do we need five days worth of blood? Why is it so important? Okay, so we've got a patient population um, that definitely require blood for a variety of reasons. So accidents, for example, obstetric reasons, so people who've had babies often mm. require bloods if there's complications to their deliveries. There are people with chronic conditions that regularly require blood transfusions and um, sort of a wide variety of patients and children to elderly, it's, it's needed across the board. Because it's what keeps us alive. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's Absolutely. that one common thread and I think I'm always blown away by the fact that you, you literally can and probably will save someone's life by doing this and it literally costs you nothing to go and do it. Tell us a bit more about what you guys do. The Western Cape Blood Service, I've obviously had an opportunity to, to see from both sides of the lens and have donated with you guys many times. What role do you play? How do you kind of put it into the, the ecosystem, if you will? Uh, just to give you a bit of background, so we're a non-profit, um, independent organization that operates throughout the Western Cape, and we aim to collect at least 700 units of blood on a daily basis. So we collect the blood, we transport it, we process it, and then we distribute it to patients who need it throughout the Western Cape. So in a nutshell, that's a little bit about us. You're a logistics company. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, you just got to keep it moving. Yes. Um, and it's, it must be such a tense space to work in because you almost want to crack the whip to say, listen, we need this to happen, we need it to happen right now, but you've got to welcome people in. You've got to get people to come in off their own volition to be able to do this, to make this all work. So let's demystify the process. It's quite a simple thing to go and do, and it's really not painful. Talk us through that if you can. What happens when you go to donate blood? Okay, so you'd arrive at one of our clinics, and we've got mobile clinics at different sites like churches and schools, businesses, or our fixed site uh, donation clinics at um, shopping centers. You'll arrive and complete a questionnaire that just uh, tries to identify any risks okay. that could potentially, um, not, that would make us not allow you to donate blood on that day. Ideally, we ask you to have something to eat and drink beforehand. So if you filled out the questionnaire, we haven't identified any problems. You'll have a little finger prick to test your hemoglobin level and that's to check if you've got enough red cells to donate. Okay. We'll check your pulse and blood pressure. You'll sit on one of our beds and um, we will insert a needle into your arm. Um, it is a small prick, but generally not too painful. And then we'll take some samples to test the blood for the specific infections that we test for. And then we'll take about 450 mils of your blood. Um, this procedure takes about six to 10 minutes. Um, and you will be supported by our staff and we'll talk you through the, the process in case you are a bit anxious. 
And then after that, we take the needle out and we give you something to drink and something to eat. And a biscuit. Come and on, just biscuit, say it. You know what I'm waiting biscuit. for. Yeah. I want my, want my biscuit. <laughs> and then you just relax with us for about 10 minutes or so, and then you off, carry on with your day. Double check. And there's a lovely vibe in there. I think everyone gets the relevance, the gravitas of what you're doing with such a small act, the fact that you really are helping someone. But maybe you can reinforce that. Why do you think, you've chosen to make this your life's mission. Why? Why is it so important that we donate blood? It is important because blood cannot be manufactured in a factory. We rely on voluntary, non-remunerated donors to come forward, to come and donate. Um, and that one donation can save, we, you know, we were talking about it earlier, that one donation can save lives, but that one donation can save up to three people's lives. So in that short period of time, up to 30 minutes maximum, you can really do something remarkable. You can save three people's lives. Three people's lives. Yeah. Just think of a family member. Just think of what that is like to go through. We've all touched on that kind of tragedy in some way in our lives. Imagine you could be that critical deciding factor that helps a person survive something like that just by giving up a few minutes <laughs> and a little bit of your blood. You can do it. We're gonna get into what might preclude us from donating blood and then how we can get out there and do that. If you've got any thoughts or questions, please share them, 0634088863. Now I gotta say it, my good man needs a little bit of help getting dressed this morning. Please, can you help him out? It's my feel good breakfast show. Very good morning and good morning if you've just woken up. Where you been? You're missing a fantastic show. In fact, an enlightening one. I love it when we get to focus on health issues like this because it's a collective and something we can all play our part in. Now, transfusion medical specialist, Dr. Caroline Hilton and head of marketing and PR at the Western Cape Blood Service, Michelle Vermeulen are still with us this morning as we continue our discussion around blood donation. And it is reported that every two seconds, in fact, someone needs blood. One, there, there, there. There, that's how fast this is happening. And while a unit of blood can save up to three lives, we've established making donating even more vital. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, drop us a line. You can send us a WhatsApp voice note, 063-408-8863. In fact, we had come, one come through from Leandre right now. Let's take a listen. Hi, I would like to know, um, we donate our blood for free. Um, do you charge the patients for the blood? Um, well, how does that work? She wants her cut. Jean-André wants her piece <laughs> of the pie, yo. Um, Jean-André, thank you so much for, for donating. Interesting question, because it speaks to the, how the mechanism actually works. Yes. I don't know who wants to, to handle that one, yeah. Um, I'm happy to. This is a question we do come across occasionally. So we are called a cost recovery, um, well, we have a cost recovery business model. So we do charge the patient or the hospital for the blood ultimately, even though we do collect it for free, because we have to um, process, pay yeah. for the, the testing of the blood, for the processing into the different um, products, into the running of our service. So we're a not-for-profit organization, but we do require money to run the organization without making a profit. The production line requires resources. Absolutely. It's as simple as that. So okay. the, the, yeah. We do charge for blood. There we go, Jandre, I hope that it helps. I think we've got one more voice now. So Erica weighed in on the discussion. Let's hear what she had to say. Good morning, Espresso Show. Morning. I would like to know if you have high blood pressure, can you donate blood? And if you don't know your, your type, can you still, can you still uh, donate blood? Thank you. I'm gonna, Erica, thank you so much for, for two great questions. I'm gonna prefix this and say like, I have to ask what my blood type is every time and I'm at this age, maybe it's just how old I am. Um, but it does raise a really interesting question in terms of what precludes us. So let's start with high blood pressure. Does that prevent us? Presumably, yes. Um, no, really? so if your, blood, okay. if your blood pressure is well controlled and you're within certain um, limits, we absolutely would accept you to donate blood. And that's why you do the testing and the, the tests beforehand to make sure that you are feeling... <laughs> yes, so we do yeah. check your blood pressure beforehand and it has to be within the, the specifications, but we'd happily um, accept people who are taking blood pressure medication as long as they're well controlled. Well controlled. Okay, what precludes us guys from being able to donate blood? Okay, so there, there are quite a lot of reasons, and I think it's very frustrating to the public because we put out the appeal to please come and donate blood, and people arrive, and then they're turned away, which um, is understandably frustrating. frustrating. Well, soul-destroying if you've built up the courage Absolutely. to go and do it, yeah. So our basic criteria is you need to be between 16 to 75 years of age as a first-time donor. You need to weigh more than 50 kilograms, and you need to be well and fit. 
And then when you arrive at the clinic, we ask you to complete that questionnaire. And it covers a wide variety of topics where we perceive there's potential risk okay. of infection being transmitted from your blood to the patient. So we'll ask for information about recent travel, for example, to malaria areas, any evidence of infection um, or illness that could potentially be transmitted, we try and identify. That's absolutely the worst thing, yeah. We look for um, if people use specific medications or drugs and okay. um, that perhaps could be harmful to the, again, the patient receiving that product, specifically pregnant women, mm. um, if they receive certain drugs that could harm their developing fetus. Um, and then we also delve into some lifestyle risk. So that would involve, for example, recent sexual um, contact with, with new partners that could potentially um, transmit infection through that process. We also ask about drug use and a variety of lifestyle risk factors. And it's risk, and that's what it is, establishing the risk of being able to, to enter into this, this kind of agreement or contract of sorts, because there is something, it's almost like the ultimate human contract. It's like, what can I do on the base level to help my fellow man, to help a family member of someone else's family while I, they can't be there. I like to think of it in the context of family like that. This being said, it must be a beast that is chasing you nonstop. You wake up and you need it. You go to bed, you need it tomorrow. You've got to keep pushing. Why is awareness around this so important and what does that need to look like? How should we be talking about this, do you think, Michelle? So awareness is definitely crucial because we need to have, we always aim to have 1% of the Western Cape population needs to be part of the active donor base. Okay. So we are hovering around that 1% at the moment um, and we want to increase that to at least to 2%. So we need young people, we need the young guys to start becoming blood donors, to become the regular blood donors of the future. So. Yes, I think that's why it's so important to have the conversations. The regular blood donors need to talk to the younger blood donors mm. to get them to start donating because I think other people always think there's somebody else to do it. There yeah. isn't somebody else. It's up to you to come forward and actually start that blood donation journey. You can make the difference. Are you awesome enough to be 1%? Are you incredible enough to be that 1% to put yourself right at the top of society, of humanity, because that's what this is for me. It is at its base level, helping your fellow man, and that's all of our responsibility, and it is so easy. So we're gonna to continue to reinforce just how easy it is to join this amazing family, and who knows, you could save not one, not two, but three lives today by doing something that is absolutely simple and oh so easy. Stick around, we'll continue the conversation, wrap it up in just a moment. It's my feel good Welcome back as we wrap up our discussion on blood donation with a transfusion medical specialist, Dr. Caroline Hilton, and head of marketing and PR at the Western Cape Blood Service, Michelle Vermeulen. And to meet the daily demand for blood on average of three and a half thousand units of blood must be collected per day. That's a lot. A unit of blood is also used to help advance the science of blood-related medicine worldwide if it is used for research purposes. We don't think about the bigger picture. So if your last chance to ask any questions right now, if you have any blood donating questions, please WhatsApp them to 063408863. Ladies, thank you so much for sticking around. Now we're going to go kind of inception here and we're going to turn in on ourselves and meet Bianca van Aert, our social media manager and a really good friend of ours who is herself a regular donator. Bianca, thank you for being just so amazing and awesome. And I want everyone at home to think about this right now because you yourself can do something to save not one but three people's lives today. All you have to do is get out to your closest donation spot and there are many, most of them at shopping centers that you're probably visiting every day. Bianca, you've done it many times. What was your motivation to go and do this? Um, I think it started at Basti. My sister mm. was doing it, so I was like, cool, I need to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just, uh, it was a really cool experience because you knew you were doing something good for other mm. people, but it didn't take much of you. Um, the blood donating center at Basti was quite close to where we stayed and to the campus, so it was walking past and you pop in, you fill in the form, and then you just chill there for like 10 minutes and obviously it was a competition to see who can donate the fastest. <laughs> and then you get like cookies and juice afterwards. I mean, what's not to love? Come on, I love it. Uh, so how many times do you reckon you've donated blood? Um, I've 
only really started doing it consistently in the past two years again. Uh, I, I once donated and my iron was too low. And then I didn't go back for a while because there's a period that you have to wait and then get, back, get it back. Be but healthy, then yeah. uh, last year I started doing it consistently because I go right here at Blue Root Mall after work. I just pop in and do it. And then one day I went in and I'm A positive, so my blood group isn't always a necessity, like they need other more rare groups. And then I saw that you can donate blood plasma. Mm. And so I've started donating my plasma because that's something that they can actually use more. Um, and, and they'll ask, like, do you need my blood group or do you need plasma more? And then uh, depending on that, I donate whichever. You're part of the 1%, baby. <laughs> you rule. Thank you so much, Bianca. Thank you, thank you, thank you for painting that picture. So simple and easy. It's like just popping into the shop to grab a loaf of bread, just go and donate some blood and save three people's lives. Come on, we can be superheroes here. Um, I've just got to ask, and this is to reinforce the need to get people out there. How hard were we hit by COVID? What did that period do? Because it seems to have added pressure in every medical sphere. How much of a backlog has that created that we need to, to offset? Oh, definitely. So the pandemic has created um, a bit of a backlog for us, the way you put it. So during that period, all of our schools closed. We couldn't go to any schools. We couldn't varsities. go to varsities. Oh. Majority of our corporate clinics also closed. So we actually had to find alternatives for our donors to go donate. And we then saw a drop. We were talking about the active donor base. It dropped to well below the 1% during the COVID period. So for us, it was really challenging to be able to provide in the to provide safe blood products or sufficient blood products during that time. Safe is always, we, that's always, but the sufficiency of it. So that's why we rely on those regular donors and the new donors to come forward to keep on so that we can supply the, to the needs of the Western yeah, Cape. So thank you to Bianca and the rest of you yes. that are doing this on a regular basis. We've got Anonymous on the line right now with a comment or question. Good morning, Expresso team. I have a question. Mm. With donating blood. Can a guy or can a person smoking marijuana donate blood? Please let me know. Some pregnant pauses there for effect. <laughs> can a person smoking marijuana, pause, donate blood? Yes, they can, but we just ask you to wait 24 hours after ingesting or smoking marijuana before okay. you do donate. Because it is very prevalent now. Sure. Yeah, so, so it, it it's again a potential risk that some of the um, marijuana could be theoretically transmitted, for example, to a baby receiving the blood product. A pregnant mom or something yeah. like that. So yeah. we, we just ask for a 24 hour deferral period. I don't know if we've got any more voice notes. Uh, Brandon weighing in. What did Brandon have to ask this morning? Good morning, Espresso Show. Good morning. My name is Brandon, and I just want to thank everybody who donates blood. As a leukemia patient, I understand the importance and the value of this blood Brilliant. to keep it up, South Africa. Don't stop. Oh, Brandon, we love you for that. Thank you so much for taking the time to put your voice out there. And I think maybe this is what we need to do. Just ask the person next to you if they have and when they're going to do it. If they haven't already, when are they going to go and donate blood? Guys, thank you so much for what you do every day. Um, I, I'm just thinking this whole time, I've been thinking about the numbers of people that get helped by this. I cannot escape this notion of saving three lives by giving up 15 minutes of your time just about to do this. Uh, but you've given up your lives to do this um, every day. So thank you so much for your efforts. Everyone who has donated blood and is doing it on a regular basis, thank you so much. If you haven't, come and join the 1%, baby. Feels good.